What is going on guys? Today we are going to go into how the next bull market has already started and that you need to make sure you're not missing out on it. So that's basically what this analyst is claiming. So we are going to take a look at an article by an analyst that is looking at the market and basically has looked at data all the way back to 1984. And they've looked at certain volume trends that we're seeing currently right now in the market that they are saying is predictive of a 15 to 25 percent upside in the market currently and they're kind of looking specifically at the nasdaq and russell because they've had the most downward swing but they're also obviously that'll have a huge effect on the s p 500 so with that said we're going to go ahead and get in this into this video if you like the video make sure you drop a like down below and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure you hit that sub button before we get into the article i have to give one disclaimer here and that is that past performance does not not indicate future behavior and let me say that one more time past performance does not indicate future behavior and what that means is just because something happened once or twice it does not necessarily mean that something is going to happen again so we're looking at data from the past that says that when this happens we've seen this result and that's good to, to know and that's good to you know understand, but you also need to understand that it does not necessarily mean that that is going to happen again. There are, are no sure things in this world and that needs to be understood. So obviously take that into consideration, make your own decisions. And if you see a stock that you think is a buy, do your own research and then make your own decision. Don't let someone on the internet or, or even analysts writing articles tell you what is the right thing to do. You need to make that decision for yourself. So that's my one disclaimer here. Uh, obviously, it's been a rough six months in the market. We're down 10.45%. In the last five days, we're actually up uh, 4.43 percent and mainly the month of Ma of May has just been absolutely terrible so we're only down 1.18 percent we were about even uh, as of a couple days ago but now we've kind of pulled back a little bit uh, you know normal market things as the market kind of goes up and down and all over the place so overall uh, a lot of interesting things kind of happening over the month of May. Let's jump in to that article that we're going to look at here in this video. So here's the article that we're taking a look at today. And this basically, I'll just read the title here. This market strategist with a spot on record sees stocks surging 15 to 25% from their May lows. And this was pub published on June 1st by Mark Hublet. And it's about a analyst by the name of Hayes Martin. So when you see this 15 to 25%, that seems actually fairly extreme, but when we scroll down here, we've actually seen a recovery uh, in the S&P 500 of 6.6% from the mid-May lows already, of the NASDAQ composite 8%, and then the Russell 2000, we've seen a recovery of 9.9%. So there's not a whole lot farther that stocks would have to run to get back to those numbers or get to make this analyst correct. But it's more about the macro trend that that would cause, right? So if, if for the stocks for stocks to recover back, they'd have to get back to close to all time highs for this analyst to be correct. And really, the question would be more so of how does that affect the overall investor confidence, right, in the market? Because as that kind of go, as that you know gets to that point, as we get back to all time highs, people will become more and more confident in the market. And that's really what's more important because all this money is sitting on the sidelines of people who've sold out. If they get more confident in the market, put their money back in, you know, that'll just drive stocks even higher. So basically, Hayes Martin, to make this prediction, is looking at two metrics. He's looking at the S&P 500 and looking at the total number of stocks that rose on a certain day versus fell on a certain day and finding the ratio between those two. And then he's also looking at the overall volume. So how many people, how much buying activity is going on and then how much selling activity is going on. So on May 25th, we saw three times as many stocks in the S&P 500 rise compared to fall. And the overall buying versus selling volume uh, was around 7.6 uh, for ratio. So a lot more buying than, than selling as well. And then on May 26th, we saw that the ratio, uh, the ratio of stocks that went up to fell actually rose all the way to 8.4. per uh, 8.4, And then the volume rose all the way up to 11.7. 
So again, these are huge numbers. So a lot more buying or a lot more companies that had positive days and then a lot more buying overall in the market, which you know, you'd know you expect these two to be very well correlated. And then on May 27th, we saw uh, the ratio of volume go even higher to 12.8%. So overall, really big, you know, really positive moves. And then the other thing to go along with this is, right, these are three back-to-back -back days that we saw these big uh, positive moves in the market, um, in the, basically in the, the bullish direction. Martin has 20 similar measures uh, of these, what he's calling market thrusts. And basically, like we just talked about, it, where, we're, it, where we're seeing certain days or three plus days of excess volume uh, in terms of stocks that have gone up uh, compared to stocks that have gone down, and then also volume in terms of buying pressure versus selling pressure. So he's seen over 20 kind of occurrences and those are dating back all the way to 1984. And then what we have here is a very interesting chart, basically looking at the returns uh, of the subsequent three months, six months, and 12 months uh, following those market thrusts. And what we see is in the following three months, we average out to just under 5%. Uh, in the following six months, we, we average out to just under what looks like maybe 8%. And then in the following 12 months, we average out to a little over 20%, maybe 21%. So this lines up right here, the, the 12, per, uh, 12 month number with kind of where his prediction's coming in at, right? So he's predicting 15 to 25%. So, right, he's saying that um, based off the numbers that he's seen over the next 12 months, we could see, you know, around a 20% return. And obviously these numbers are averages. So he's probably, you know, playing it in, in this range, but, you know, there's always gonna be those occurrences maybe where we had 13 to 14% over the next 12 months, or there could be the occurrence on the other side where we have 35%, you know? So remember that, just keep that in mind that when you're looking at numbers like this, basically they're looking at a, a few, what could be a few groupings of numbers and the average just comes out to 20. So keep that in mind when, when you're looking at a chart like this. So the last thing I wanted to look at are kind of two last little parts to this article. And basically what they're talking about here is, so the last time I reported on Martin, uh, was uh, in early May and he predicted an 8 to 15 percent rally the market's recent gains have satisfied that prediction and then if we scroll down to here uh, basically all of this right does this mean the bar bear market is over uh, on this Martin says the jury is still out As at a minimum however he says that the retest of the market's low recent lows is not likely in the next two month month or two so really you know, that's kind of two contradicting statements, right? And my whole point in this last little bit is analysts say a lot of things and they aren't always right and they're not always wrong. They just say enough, you know, that they're somewhere in the middle. They're close enough to being right if you look at it in one light and they're close enough to being wrong if you look at it in another light. So never make your decisions based off what they're saying. Obviously, these are good metrics. That's a positive sign. If you have a plan though, don't deviate from your plan just because some analyst says you know something. You should always consider it and, and take it uh, for what it is and then you know use the data that's actually behind it and understand it and then make your own decision based off it. So personally, I'm always bullish on the market. I think the market over time, as we've seen, it tends to always go up. The question is, you know, how long is it going to take to, to get back to what is up? And I, I don't see any reason why he could be wrong. I'm still a net buyer, uh, but I'm always a net buyer. So this really doesn't affect anything. But I do like seeing, you know, for once in the last month, a very positive article that is, you know, promoting the, the buying of stocks and, and people getting back into the market. So that's kind of refreshing to see. And that's what I kind of wanted to share in this video. So I hope you enjoyed the content. I hope it's kind of a, a positive thing to your day. Uh, I mean, the market's kind of bounced back a little bit, which is, you know, put me in a good mood and hopefully it's put you guys in a good mood as well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your day.